Hello everyone, welcome back to another Ethan Journal video. Today we have a very cool video that I've been working on for about a few days now. Um, researching this topic that I was kind of interested in, and that is the history of every single Apple TV remote ever. Now, this won't be a very long video because there aren't as many remotes as most people think. Of course, the first remote came out with the Apple TV first gen which was this remote. And then the Apple TV second gen, and I think the third gen too, use this remote. And then the fourth gen used all three of these just because they haven't really renamed the fourth gen in a while. Now we're just called Apple TV HD and Apple TV 4K. So essentially what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go over the different types of Apple TV remotes that have existed, how to tell each one apart, and the cool features that each of them have. Let's get started. Okay, starting off with the Apple TV first gen remote. Now, this remote was pretty familiar to most people when the Apple TV first generation was released because this remote was actually included on most iMacs at the time. The iMac G5 had used this remote for front row along with, I believe, the regular Intel iMac, which looked like the iMac G5. This was the remote that was magnetically attached to the side of that computer. Now, this remote was again introduced with the Apple TV first generation, which basically was a front row device. And if you don't know what front row was, it was a piece of software that was used on Macs back in 2007, I think around that time period, um, that essentially turned your uh, iMac or whatever computer you were using into a media center where you could listen to music, watch movies, watch music videos, and other things that you do with your Apple TV nowadays. Of course, there were no streaming apps. It was mostly just what you bought in iTunes and files that you were to have. And that's where this remote came into play. Now, the funny thing about this remote is this laptop I have here is an older laptop. Um, and watch what happens when I press the volume up button. That was the funny quirk about these remotes is that they can control Macs. This is because of the fact that it was originally used in that iMac and that led it to the, to the point where it could actually work with the other Macs that had a built-in infrared sensor, which this one does. So for the most part, any Macs that came around, out around the time that they would have had an infrared sensor on them, this remote would work with it, which is kind of funny because it kind of makes sense because the Apple TV first gen was essentially a front row device and front row came on Macs. So if I'm thinking, I do have an older Mac, an iMac G5, where if I press the menu button on this or I press front row, this will immediately start working as a remote thinking the iMac is an Apple TV because front row was essentially what the first Apple TV ran. All right, moving on to the second generation remote. This is probably, I'd say like my middle favorite remote because um, the reason I don't like this one a bunch is because of its thin design. It just did not feel like a good remote to hold. I felt like it was too thin um, to even do anything with because I mean, it was fine. I mean, I, my Apple TV that I had for about five years was a third gen, and this is the remote that came with it. So I used it, and it worked fine, but definitely not one of my most favorite remotes ever. Um, this remote had was very simple, just like the first one. It had a simple D-pad with um, up, down, left, right, and a middle button, which was your select button. It had a menu button, which was indented in, so you could figure out that was the menu button if you're in the dark watching a movie. I want to make sure you know which one it is. And we're going to bring that up a little bit later in the video how that became a problem in a later version of the Apple TV remote. So yeah, the menu button was indented. The pause and play button was regular, just like the D-pad, it was uh, flush with the metal casing. Now this remote, um, like the first one, had a removable battery slot in the back because these you do not charge. You change them out with your normal coin cell battery. And more or less, this is a pretty good remote. Now this one does also control most uh, Macs with an infrared rece uh, receiver, kind of like you can see here. Um, which is kind of funny that this one could also do that because this both of these remotes are essentially compatible with most all Apple TVs. I'm not so sure about the later ones like the 4K and the HD because we don't have one of those currently. Um, but we do have one on the way actually that me and my family are going to start using. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I don't know if this one works with those newer ones, but I do know that this works with the second gen Apple TV and the third gen Apple TV for sure. And honestly, this is probably a middle range remote. I would probably give this a 5 out of 10 if I had to rate it. All right, moving on to probably my least favorite remote Apple ever made. And I'm not alone on this. A lot of people really do hate this remote here. Now, this remote, I don't know what I call it. I kinda, I'm gonna call it, so first gen was this one, second gen was this one. I'm gonna call this the third gen. 
there was a lot of problems with this one that a lot of people did not like. One reason being the fact that it had touch controls. There was no D-pad anymore. It just had these touch controls, and nobody really liked that. There were some people that liked it. I being one not that liked it, I did not like this at all. In fact, if they would have given me a D-pad that with touch controls, that would have been a lot better. But essentially, the thing that made this a hard thing, not only because the touch controls were really finicky at times, but because it had touch controls and no D-pad, is you never knew which way you're holding it. You could be holding it right side up with the touchpad, or I'm going to call it touchpad, on the top, which is how you should hold it, or with the touchpad on the bottom. You would never know because it feels the same no matter what way you're holding it. Of course, the buttons should tell you a line. Nope, the buttons are in the center, basically making it impossible unless you can memorize which button is which to know which one, which uh, orientation was right. Another thing that really was nice about the old Apple TV remotes was that the menu button was indented, letting you know if you were in the dark, you could know which one it is. And this one, nope, there's nothing. They're, all the buttons are essentially the, pretty much the same, other than the Siri button of all things, which is the only button that's indented. Um, the menu button is essentially flush, just like the rest of them. But these buttons aren't flush, at least they're raised up, which is a nice thing. But honestly, this is like a 2 out of 10. This is an awful remote. I really did not like it. But one thing that was nice about it is that it introduced lightning port charging. No longer did you have to replace these with a C-cell battery. No, 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 not anymore. Now you can plug it in with your normal lightning cord like I have here. If I plug in my normal lightning cord, that's how you charge your remote. You literally never had to replace batteries. You just plug it in, essentially, to the wall next to your Apple TV. And that is something that Apple still has in the remotes to this day. Moving on to the fourth generation remote, as I'm calling it, which is almost identical to the third generation remote, as I'm calling it. Um, other than the fact that the menu button has a, right, has a white circle around it. This was Apple's attempt to make it easier to use in the dark, because the menu button was the only button that had this white circle around it. I mean, I can see how this kind of helped, honestly, but in most cases, it was still as bad as the first one. Other than that, this design was essentially the same as the third gen, other than the fact that it did have that white circle uh, around the menu button. And now, moving on to the fifth generation remote, Apple's newest remote, and my personal favorite. This remote has so many good things. Apple introduced this in the latest Apple TV um, announcement that they had about last year, and honestly, I think a lot of people like this one compared to the old ones. After two generations of Apple making awful remotes, they finally came back and fixed it with this one. Honestly, some of the things I like about this are the contrast because the buttons are black, which makes them easy to see. And um, the fact that they are raised up kind of like in the old ones, it essentially makes it really nice. The design is really nice. And the thing I like about it probably the most is how chunky it is. Um, the first one was chunky. You could feel like you could hold it. It kind of felt like a phone uh, in some ways. And it was easier to hold than the second gen, third gen, and fourth gen remotes. It was a lot easier to hold. They finally brought that back in this one. Like, this thing is, I could grip this. These ones, I cut this, like, slide around in my hand, kind of like the iPhone 6 did because they were making them so skinny. This one you can actually kind of hold and you don't lose it. Um, the back is also beveled, but um, which these ones were flat kind of like the second gen in a way, um, but for the most part, this was a nice design. They moved the Siri button over to the right side, which was nice, and they added a power button. Now, this power button, depending on what TV you have, can turn on and off your TV and sound system, or in our case, um, it only turns off the Apple TV, which is fine. It allows you to control your Apple TV right from the remote if you want to shut it off or anything like that. Um, the nice thing about this one is, again, there is a somewhat an easy way of figuring out. They kind of took homage from the second generation where the menu button, other, other than known now in this remote as the back button, there's no menu button anymore, this is now the back button, is indented in so you can kind of feel it compared to the other ones, but still not the best. Um, but it's at least easier than the uh, third and fourth gen. And one of the nice things about this is they brought back the D-pad. Now, remember how I was saying that these ones people did not like? Well, they didn't, they only had touch controls. But what I said I wanted was a D-pad with touch controls. And that's exactly what this thing is. If you like the touch controls, feel free to just swipe um, your finger across this one and it works as a regular touch controls. But there's also tactile uh, D-pad buttons on this, which make it so much nicer for the people that hated the touch controls, AKA me. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. And like the other two, 
Um, the third gen and fourth gen, it does still have microphone. It does still have Siri support. Essentially, it was like the third and fourth gen, except a lot better improved design. Overall, I think the history of the Apple TV remotes are pretty cool. Seeing how Apple adva advances from a pretty nice design to a good design, and then again, fails at two designs total. At least in my opinion, these were not good remotes, the third and fourth gen. And then coming back last year with a great design. We've kind of seen this more recently with a lot of Apple products as of right now. Looking at the MacBook lineup, for many years, they had overheating problems. They were too skinny. They didn't have ports. Um, and a lot of problems were occurring with the MacBooks for a long time. Now that we see Apple switch away from Intel processors and over to M1, it is really seeing improvements in the MacBook Pro line. They brought back the ports. They brought back MagSafe. They're really powerful. They don't overheat as much anymore with their custom M1 processors. We're kind of seeing this lately with Apple where they take a turn that they, they take form over function and people hate it for a long time and Apple really does not change it for a little bit. But recently they've come back and they've expressed it and they've essentially taken our feedback in most cases and made better products. We've seen that with the Mac. We've seen it with the Apple TV remote of all things. I don't really know about the iPhone. I really never had a worst iPhone design that I can say. But honestly, it was pretty nice. And it's nice to see Apple coming back and improving their products. In some cases, taking function over form finally rather than form over function. I would like to thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to support the future of this YouTube channel, along with see much more perks, you can head over to my Patreon, which I have linked down below. Uh, other than that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Have a good rest of your day and goodbye.